Hey, my name is Danny, and this is my minivan, and she doesn't have a name, but I have been traveling around for about a year and a half. I'll tell you a little bit about my story, and then we'll get into the tour. A couple of years ago, I was burnt out at work. I was in a job I didn't love. I had been saving money for maybe an RV, maybe some kind of change in life, and I realized I might have enough money to quit my job for a year and travel if I was willing to go really bare bones. I got a minivan instead of a big RV or a sprinter van, you know, um, big dream vehicle or whatever. I started where I was with what I had and I just did what I could do. So my channel is You and Me Living Free on YouTube. And I really started the channel just to kind of document my journey and my memory is not that great. I wanted to have literally like kind of a scrapbook, video scrapbook for my kids. If no one ever watched the channel, that was fine. And it just became kind of a passion project where I would tell my stories on the road. I just, you know, started where I was with what I had. I bought this minivan for $3,400 and I took the rest of the money and just tried to travel. I went out west a lot and down south, um, not much in the, in the north or the east. So, what happened though is I was just, I was just burnt out and I had a dream to travel for a year in the minivan and I'm at a transitional time in life. My, my kids are, I'm soon to be empty nester. My kids are in college, but they're still home. And so I'm like, what do I want to do with my life? So now I am back in Kansas city traveling here and there, but it's really kind of decision time on whether I will stay in town for the next year or two and work at maybe sticks and bricks or if I will be able to get something remote, keep traveling, all of that kind of stuff is up in the air. But, you know, life is a journey. That's just, that's half the fun is not knowing. So we're just up for anything and, um, and we have dreams and just move forward, you know, step by step, right? I have a 2009 Toyota um, Sienna and uh, she doesn't have a name. I never named her. I kind of feel like I should. You can see the crack in the front windshield. It needs to be replaced. It's already been replaced once, but that's what happens when you're on the road. You almost need to have a secret savings account for, for new windshields. <laughs> At least that's what I find. So let's, let's get into the tour. I literally have everything I need within this minivan. It totally can be done. And here's how I did it. seat I want to keep pretty clear. Usually I keep my Jackery cords down here. I keep some gloves because I try to pick up litter no matter where I go and a couple of battery packs. I keep a um, air purifier up front. It gets recharged from the sun so I leave it up there. I never have trouble with smells in the van. I think that's because I don't cook anything that splatters a lot or that you know a lot of people have trouble with smells in the van. I don't. I keep the front seat pretty clean and uh, I am usually in and out through the back back here. Now the front did have a console in the middle. I took that out so that I could easily move from front to back with my doors closed, traveling as a, you know, as a woman, single woman, whatever. It, it was important to me to have that kind of, be able to be a little more stealthy, not have to get in and out of the van like this. So there's plenty of room for me to get in. I usually carry a little bit bigger cooler, but now I'm only going on shorter trips. And here is my stove right there. And I keep a lot of my dry, dry goods food right in the back. So I have everything I need if I want to cook. I can cook right here on a tray or I can pull things out and cook on a picnic table or whatever. Up here on the back of the seat, I have those really essential things that I will just uh, use on a regular basis. Uh, you know, sunscreen and bug spray, <laughs> sunscreen, bug spray and wipes. I mean, how more basic do you get than that? That's basically what's there in front. When I first started out, I did my first trip with a cot. And then I realized, you know, I really love good sleep. Good sleep is so important. I have a very basic bed. It is two by fours and a piece of um, wood paneling and mattress pad topping that I have doubled over. So I use regular twin sheets and everything on that. And then I have my storage, my main storage of stuff that I use all the time is right under here. So cooking stuff and, and um, plates, everything like that is there. And then we have the pots and pans and the, and the collapsible dish um, dishwash bowl and then stuff for showers and, and cleaning and stuff like that is there. So I mostly sit, if I'm sitting in the van, I'm sitting on my bed or 
I'm just sitting in the pa I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I do a lot of things in the driver's seat. If I'm if I'm journaling, if I'm working on editing a YouTube video, anything, I'm usually in in that seat right there. Typically, I would have my Jackery up here. I just have a Jackery 240, but it's it's not here with me right now. But the 240 is good for phones, fans, lights, and my computer and my Kindle. The 240 is just fine. If I wanted to get a refrigerator ever, I'm gonna need more than the 240. That's something for people to consider, I think. Back here is my little small pop-up tent. I use this when I'm in a BLM spot and I wanna to leave to go to town and I don't wanna lose my spot. I bring this out and it basically will just pop itself out like that. Door on either side. I put a nice, um, usually big size rock inside to hold it down because I don't feel like doing the, the tent poles. And so back here you can see I have my solar panel. I have a collapsible bucket for garbage or whatever I need if I'm out boondocking. And then in my bins, these are my clothes bins. No matter what it is, I allow myself two bins for clothes. And then in the bottom one, I usually travel, try to start the travel with it empty or something kind of for backup. I have three of these bins. The first one is for food. The second one is for my backup items of stuff I use a lot, which would be like toilet paper, plates, wipes, all that kind of stuff. And then the bottom bin is for garage type items, not battery charger, but my instant start, my little Thor thing that starts the battery. If it runs down, things like that, extra canopies and, and, and uh, canvas and stuff I keep in the bottom one. I keep my camp chair here. It takes up a lot of room. It's a great big Coleman, but it's so important to have a big comfy camp chair. So I do it anyway. And then I keep my window covers back here. And my window covers are basically um, just some Reflectix with some black material uh, glued on, on one side. And they've worked great for a year and a half. And then I keep my extra butane canisters over here in the little cutout there at the back of the van. <laughs> on this side, I usually have two two and a half gallon water tanks right here that just slide in nicely. I do two and a half instead of five gallon. I don't want to lift up a five gallon and try to get it filled all the time. I also keep this passenger side pretty lean and mean. There is the stuff in the gray that I, that's just everyday stuff that I need. The tent's flying <laughs> away. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So Danny, I noticed your van is very clean inside. <laughs> and so my question is, how do you keep it so clean? Here's the thing. I'm not really uh, super, super, super clean by nature, but in the van, you have to be. You literally have to be. You have any idea how easy it is to lose the smallest thing from the van? It's the most frustrating thing in the world. So literally every single thing has a place and it has to stay in its place when it's not being used, period. End of story. It, it has to be. Normally these vans have a center console. Did you pull your center console out? I pulled it out on purpose. It was critical for me to pull it out because I wanted to be able to get front seat to back seat sleeping stealthy. I have my window covers, they cover everything. And I wanted to be able to get in and out of the van without people knowing that I was some single person traveling alone. So uh, that was very important to me. I pulled it out and I just lift up my little arm thing and I can easily get from front to back. Or if I'm in, I feel like I'm in any danger, any bad situation, I'm always like, I could jump right in the car and go. So my Toyota Sienna has a bunch of metal pieces on the floor and uh -huh. I noticed that you have a really nice carpet on here. Yeah. Do you, did you remove your rails or is the carpet um, covering your rails? The carpet is covering, plus I have those playground mats or the uh, weightlifting room mats, but they, they fit together like puzzle pieces and then I have literally taped them down. I also took where the seat usually hooks in and I have covered them with extra foam and stuff because they were still sticking my knees when I would hit one wrong. So that was important to me. So yeah, it's, it's soft and I can crawl around in here when I need to. So if I'm sitting in the back of the van, I'm probably sitting here like this now. So I can grab a little table from the back, set it up. I can cook in here if I want, just set up my stove right here, leave my window or my door open to vent. My dry food is here, my cold food is here, and I have everything I need to cook right here. Plates and stuff. 
skillets and stuff, everything is right here within arm's reach. You have a semi no build conversion and yes. you don't have any back seats. Did you remove your back seats? I removed my back seats and donated them, yes. For a while I left it in storage and I was like, I'm literally never gonna use this. And if I do sell it, I'm not gonna sell it probably until it just goes to the junkyard anyway. So I wasn't gonna worry about it. They took up too much room. So your bed, you talked about it a little bit before. Is it a trifold? Is it a solid? Is it a foam? Yeah. I, I dreamed about having one of those beds where you know it had the piano hinge and you could do it up and get to the storage. I went with something just even more simple than that because this bed is more than really I could even manage on my own. I got a monthly membership at a workspace that had tools and everything so that I could cut the plywood, so that I could cut the legs to be all the right size. There are no two legs on this bed that are the same size. Every single bed, every single leg is a different size. And so I put eight legs on it instead of a lot of them you'll see do six and I made it 26 inches wide and it is so, so, so stable. Um, it's, it's one of the best parts. I literally sleep on this bed as, as well as I do my bed at home. So would you say that anybody can build a bed like this? Well, here's the thing. I would have said anybody, but I didn't have the garage space. I didn't have the tools. So I had to have a membership to build it but sleep was like one, my number one priority. It's like safety and sleep are two huge things, right? So I had to have it. So I did the membership. So almost anyone could do it. I mean, I had never done anything like this. I had never used a saw to cut a piece of wood. I had never nailed in a two by four. And it was a lot harder than a lot of the videos will, <laughs> will have you think when they show you all the edited versions of just putting it together. Mine was a lot tougher than that for me. It took like two days for me and my daughter, but it was worth it. Now your window shades seem like they are custom. Did you make those yourself? I made them myself and I'm not crafty at all. <laughs> I can show you kind of how they fit in, which is good enough, but they're not very pretty, and, but they are 100% functional and sometimes that just has to be good enough and they were very cheap. Here's one example, right? They're like, it, it looks kind of okay from this side. <laughs> and then the other side you can tell. So the Reflectix, and the material which i did with um, adhesive spray on glue but then the corners started to come up after about eight months or so so then i took some gaffer tape and just taped down some problem areas and literally that is how it works and so you can put it it goes in super easy like that's as easy as it as it can possibly be that's literally all it takes how you prefer to have it when you're inside is like this, but it looks, it broadcasts to the whole world that you're inside if you have it like this. So if you want stealthy, you go with blackout. About how much did it cost you to make those? Like $30 for the Reflectix. I had to have two rolls instead of one, just barely, because I wanted to make one um, for the back and all these back windows. Also, I made Reflectix for my, pass my driver and passenger, which a lot of people don't, but there's so much, so many times when I'm up in front and the sun is just glaring in that front. So I made it for those two things. So I needed two rolls of Reflectix. They were like 20 a piece. So 40, 10 or $12 for the fabric, five bucks for the spray adhesive, and then gaffer tape was like $10, but I already had some. So literally, you know, 50 bucks or so. I couldn't live without my fan. My fan and my Lucy light, we'll put these right here. And so this plugs right into my Jackery, goes right here. I can shift direction. I can move it this way and that way. It is my lifesaver. I love this little fan. Oh, Polar. Love it. It's got a slow and a fast speed. I can have it on all night and it takes maybe 5% of my Jackery or something, even on high. It takes very little takes very little power and um, love it. That and my Lucy light, I stick it up in the front window when I'm, when I'm traveling and then stick it back here at night. It'll go for two or three days usually. So I went to the Grand Canyon for the first time as I was traveling out west and in the van. And the first time I went to the Grand Canyon, I had chills. I loved it. So I was completely in love with the Grand Canyon, completely enamored. And when I started watching videos on the Grand Canyon, I saw somebody do a hike of the Grand Canyon. Actually, they did it all in one day, but I got it into my head that I really wanted to hike the Grand Canyon rim to rim. And then I'm like, no, I'm way too out of shape. It's way too, it's impossible. But it's a dream that just kept coming up again and again and again. So I decided I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna give myself almost two years to train. I'm starting with just little walks five times a, a week. And I have a whole planning schedule of what to do with what months and how I'm gonna get in good enough shape. 
enough to do the Grand Canyon rim to rim, which is like 24 miles and 4,000 feet um, inc incline in like two days and crazy, right? Down to the bottom of the, the canyon and then up out again. Um, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm scared and excited. Like that's how you know you're onto something with your dreams, right? You're, you're excited, but you also got that fear. You know, you're just kind of really going for something big. So I'm thrilled and I'm going to do it in two years, which will be October, 2024. And so just starting that journey is really, I'm going to share a lot of that on my channel too. Um, really excited about starting that journey. So Danny, what's been the hardest part about your van life journey? The hardest part, the hardest part was, okay, I'll say two things. Number one, just the very first trip, like doing the work ahead of time to be able to go out and travel in the van was probably the hardest part. Putting everything in order that had to be in order, getting my priorities right, getting knowing people were going to look at me and say, why are you doing that? You're crazy. Put that money in a 401k and, you know, retire early or whatever. Um, so getting by everybody and doing all the things I had to do to actually start was probably the hardest thing. Another hard thing is when you're out there for a while, you, it, everyday decisions are, are kind of hard. It's, it's kind of hard to go, it's harder to go to the bathroom. It's harder to cook meals. It's harder to do the essentials of life when you're in a van. And it's also, um, finding a place where you're going to stay always kind of having that pressure of not quite having that solidity uh i missed I, I i just got to the point where i kind of missed that stability like always being in motion was divine and then after a while you're like okay now i need to slow down and and spend some time in one place do you ever feel lonely on the road i never do and i thought i might my having my camera doing my videos on YouTube is kind of like I feel like I have a friend like I don't think about a bunch of people watching I think about like having one friend with me to kind of share the journey so that's kind of how I view it and I guess like I really like my own company I I've been a mom and all that stuff for so long it's so nice to have like me time like quiet time like there's so many moms and stuff who are just like, I can't even imagine having time to shower and, and have self care time, let alone going off and doing that. Like I, I loved having the time by myself. I could go, I go two weeks without talking to another human and be perfectly, perfectly good. So what's been your best or favorite experience on the road? It is nearly impossible to pick one. And uh, it really is my, my, I thought I wasn't going to like the, the rainforest and I would have to say that Washington and Olympic National Park and Mount Rainier, that area, the beaches and the rainforest and the mountains, also southern, Arizona, southern Utah and northern Arizona, that entire area with the red rock and all the gorgeousness there. There's a ton there. The big five parks in Utah, Monument Valley, everything like that. Some of the best boondocking I've ever had right in that strip. So those are a couple for you. And of course the Grand Canyon, like I already mentioned, which is phenomenal. Did you ever get to Slab City in your travels or <laughs> have you ever thought about it? You know what? I got close enough and then I, I was a little scared to go. I, I was, you know, me just on my own. It's kind of like going down into Mexico. Like a lot of people do it. I want to go down into Mexico, but I want to do it with a small caravan. I wasn't going to go to Slab City by myself. I've just heard things here and there. What's your best tip or trick that you'd like to share with anybody who is just now learning about or thinking about getting into minivan camping? I would say there's a certain amount of planning you can do, but I would, I would encourage you to start traveling with just the bare basics. I bought so many things that I ended up not needing that if I had just waited until I actually got out, then I would have had a better idea. So if you can do short trips at first and decide what you really need, and I wouldn't buy anything on Amazon only gives you 30 days to return something. So use it within that first 30 days because I've lost hundreds of dollars because I couldn't return something to Amazon that I needed to. And, and honestly, just to do it, there are a hundred, 200, 300 people who talk about doing it more than that one person who actually will. And I just want people to be like that kind of person in life where you have that dream and just do it. Even if it's in a small way, just, just try, just do it. What I'd like to just say about safety, a lot of people ask me if I feel safe when I'm on the road. And I, I truly feel like number one, statistically, I'm, 
the most dangerous thing I do is drive miles on the open road and drive in places where I don't, I don't know. So I'm always trying to be careful when I drive. And the second thing is follow your intuition. If a place doesn't feel right, I always have a backup or a plan B somewhere else that I can go. And I have even called local police departments asking, I got here, it's the only place in town listed on iOverlander. Is there somewhere I can go that I could park overnight and be okay? I'm just passing through it only be one night and they will tell you. So uh, listen to your gut. And like when I'm laying down, I feel very, I usually feel very secure because I'm inside a steel box. I lock everything up at night. If I get scared at anything like I have done at like maybe one Walmart parking lot, I pull down the window shades, I start the car and I leave and that's, it's pretty safe being in a being in a steel box, but otherwise follow your intuition. And I have my car alarm right by me. I have a plan in my head of what I would do if someone came up and tried to get in. So that would be to ring my my honk my horn on my car alarm and to simply get up and drive away. I was back into the parking lot, parking spots, things like that. So safety is a concern, but it's not it's not going to stop me from doing anything I want to do. So the wind is crazy, but. No joke, we got caught up talking and we ran down the battery on a Danny's Toyota Sienna. And so we're gonna try her jump starter. Hopefully it works. <laughs> but if not, I do have jumper cables. Okay, cool. This will work. I'm curious. This baby has, it's really safe. It's really great. Some of the best 50 bucks I ever spent. This is all there is to it. And I've used it literally like half a dozen times. So we do black first. I don't think it matters, but I do the black first. It only matters, I guess, if the smoke comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that started right up. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out Danny's channel at You and Me Living Free here on YouTube, and I'll see you on my next adventure.